Tip number six, get the details right. Bathrooms are full of little details, even if it's a very simple bathroom, or visually very simple, actually even more important to get the detailing right. For example, the image I showed you at the beginning of the, uh, of the big white bath, avocado shaped bath with a single sheet of glass, that works because there are no visible fixings for that glass. The way that's been detailed into the construction has been very, very carefully done so that you don't see anything, so it looks as simple as possible. One of the most common areas of detail that makes a big difference in any bathroom is tiling. We all like lots of tiling on our bathroom. Tiling can be many, many things. It no longer is about white um, four-inch squares. In this particular example, we have a mosaic of strips of dark grey tiles. They're a sort of uh, granite sort of effect, granite tiles with, with staggered joints, and it causes a really, really lovely horizontal effect. In this bathroom, this is again a bit washed out in this image, I apologise for the quality of that, but I wanted to talk about a, a concept called tile modulation. In this image, we've chosen a tile that is one metre wide and 300 millimetres high, and we've modulated it so that the shower is one metre wide, so you have one complete tile across the back of there, and then another complete tile, so we're thinking about how the tile joints are being set out. It's all very well going along to your tile supplier and choosing a nice tile, but it's important also to think about how the joints of that tile, how the size of that tile will be set out on your wall, in the shower, behind the bath, behind the basin, whatever, and how those joints will be set out. Is it about centering it, for example, on the basin and then going out and cutting the two ends? Or even better, can you make that wall the exact length of nine tiles so that it all modulates along perfectly? Another little tip, which again, you might be able to see in this image, it's a bit reached out here, I hope it's visible there. If you're tiling halfway up a wall, or for example on a splashback, very easy thing to do, and very few people think of it, a piece of plasterboard on the wall above, so that the, f the face of the wall is flush with the face of those tiles. Otherwise, you get the tiles and then you get a nasty little ridge, which usually gets a bit dirty and you have to clean it off, on the top of the tiles, which steps back to the wall. Bring the surface of the wall out flush with the surface of the tile so it's all flush. It looks really, really nice. It's the sort of thing that I get really excited about. And I know that's quite sad, but there you are. Um, of course, it doesn't have to be tiling. This little tiny bathroom that we did in a loft conversion um, was used a very, very luxurious. Um, we had tiling on the floor, but very, very luxurious, very dark um, brown marble with a white vein in it. It was beautiful, it was quite expensive. But of course, the great thing about a very small bathroom is that you haven't got very many square meters of your quite expensive thing. So you can probably afford to have a slightly more quite expensive thing. I think you know where I'm going. OK, other little details. This is uh, the reverse shot of a, sh of a shot I showed you at the beginning of the bathroom with the semi-recessed basins. Storage underneath the basins, wall of mirror here to maximize the sense of space. Inside the door, there's a tall radiator Behind, and in front of that radiator, some simple steel bars. They're not heated bars, but because they're in front of the radiator, they act like a towel rail. Much cheaper than a uh, proprietary towel rail, and works very, very well. In these cupboards are the, dish, are the dishwasher, no, not the dishwasher, the washing machine, the tumble dryer, and the boiler and the cylinder, and, and so there's lots of cupboards there. And you'll notice in front of it, there's a piece of glass, and the bath is here, the bath with the shower over it. That piece of glass, is simply hanging from a sliding door mechanism. So when you get into the, sh into the bath to have a shower, pull the piece of glass across, it acts like a solid glass sh um, shower curtain. I hate shower curtains, traditional ones, particularly ones where it all gets wet and the shower's quite small and it sort of clings to you. It's absolutely revolting. Large piece of glass, very simple, on a sliding door mechanism, slides across, provides a shower screen. You want to have a bath, slide it back in front of the cupboards, and you have a bath in the normal way. But it depends on the little details. So here, obviously the, the, the glass is suspended from the sliding door mechanism, but what's to stop it swinging backwards and forwards? Well, swinging to side to side. We did two very simple little turn stainless steel pegs fixed into the end of the side of the bath, which just stop the glass swinging from side to side, keep it in line. Nice little detail, very simple. It means it's really thoroughly thought through. Tip number seven storage. 
The reality is the body shop's done a great job. We all have loads of bottles of shampoo and conditioner and body lotion and toothpaste and goodness knows what else. Loads and loads and loads and loads of stuff. If you design your lovely simple bathroom and you don't think about storage, your lovely simple bathroom will just be completely covered in bottles of brightly colored, perfumed, goodness knows what. So storage is important. Storage can be simply a couple of drawers beneath the basin. In this particular example, nice sit-on basin with a, a stand-up tap and two drawers. Very nicely made, simple piece of joinery. Nothing particularly complicated about that. Nice and simple. In this example, a bit more storage. Here we have twin basins on a, a tiled work surface, um, which goes through and that same tile is used elsewhere. Talking about using planes again. And underneath those, the tiled surface here, we have these wide drawers. In fact, those wide drawers carry on into the rest of the room. Loads and loads of storage right there, so you can therefore just have your very, very lovely little bar of soap and shaving brush for the photograph um, and keep your bathroom nice and simple. This, uh, this example shows, again, some of the ideas that people have been using for kitchens, like this. This is actually a pull-out unit. So you, you grab the thing, you pull that out, and all the bottles and lotions and perfumes and goodness knows what are on the shelves there. Shut the unit, it's all hidden away. Nice shelf, a nice surface with the twin basin in. Again, underneath there, two drawers, and on top of the drawers, a place to, to store towels. Storage, very, very, very much thought through.